Hello students, in this lecture we will be covering hypertensive and diabetic retinopathy. The learning objectives of this lecture are that at the end of the lecture you should be able to tell the etiology, the pathology, clinical features and management of hypertensive and diabetic retinopathy. So hypertensive retinopathy is characterized by a spectrum of retinal vascular signs which are secondary to systemic arterial hypertension wherein the blood pressure is usually over 140 by 90 millimeters of mercury. There are two aspects related to hypertensive retinopathy. They include the severity and the duration. We also need to be aware of hypertensive crisis wherein the systolic blood pressure is over 180 millimeters of mercury or the diastolic blood pressure is over 120 millimeters of mercury and this condition has a potential risk for causing end organ damage. So this can further be subclassified into hypertensive urgency where there is no acute end organ damage. So BP can be controlled over several days or over a few weeks. Hypertensive emergency on the other hand can result in acute end organ damage and so we have to be aggressive in lowering the blood pressure. Malignant hypertension or accelerated hypertension on the other hand requires emergent attention and in this condition the systolic blood pressure is over 200 millimeters of mercury or the diastolic blood pressure is over 130 millimeters of mercury. So the pathogenesis of hypertensive retinopathy has three phases, the vasoconstrictive phase, the exudative phase and then the sclerotic phase. What happens in the vasoconstrictive phase is that there is an increased vascular tone because of the autoregulatory mechanisms and this results in generalized narrowing of the blood vessels. Now this phase eventually is quite suggestive of the severity of the hypertension. Then if the disease continues to progress, that is if it is uncontrolled by antihypertensive medication, it results into an exudative phase in which there is a disruption of blood retinal barrier. So the patient can have hemorrhages, hard exudates or cotton wool spots. Subsequently, it goes on to sclerotic phase in which there are arteriosclerotic changes. There is arteriolar narrowing, arteriovenous sneaking. Now this is suggestive of the duration of hypertension and eventually the patient will develop opacity of the arteriolar wall. So four scenarios can happen in which hypertensive retinopathy can progress. So you have hypertensive retinopathy in simple hypertension without sclerosis. This is commonly seen in young individuals and if antihypertensive medications are given it is unlikely that it will go on to have sclerotic changes. Then there can be hypertensive retinopathy in senile sclerosis. So this is in elderlies where there is a constant smoldering process that is going on and that is damaging the blood vessels. We can also have hypertensive retinopathy in hypertension with compensatory arteriolar sclerosis. So this also is seen in young individuals and usually those who have a renal involvement. And then we have malignant hypertension or accelerated hypertension which requires urgent attention. The hallmark of this condition is disc edema. So running through the course again, systemic hypertension leads to vasoconstriction which in turn results in arteriosclerosis which now involves the arterioles by causing narrowing and this narrowed arteriole is going to have compromised blood supply to the retina. So there would therefore be retinal ischemia which would result in hypoxia and that would release uh, increased capillary permeability. There would be an increased vascular permeability factor and all this will lead to findings such as retinal edema, retinal hemorrhages, hard exudates or cotton wool spots. Actually, the word hypertensive retinopathy is a misnomer. We know that the retinal, choroidal and the optic nerve head blood vessels have different anatomical and physiological properties and they respond differently to hypertension. So it would be rather better 
टू से हाइपरटेंसिव रेटिनोपैथी हाइपरटेंसिव कोरोइडोपैथी एंड हाइपरटेंसिव ऑप्टिक न्यूरोपैथी द क्लिनिकल साइंस दैट वी विल सी इन अ पेशेंट विद हाइपरटेंसिव रेटिनोपैथी इंक्लूड जनरलाइज्ड आर्टेरियोलर नैरोइंग फोकल आर्टेरियोलर नैरोइंग आर्टेरियोवेनस निकिंग ओपेसिफिकेशन ऑफ द आर्टेरियल वॉल कॉटन वूल स्पॉट्स रेटिनल हेमरेजेस micro aneurysms in a few cases hard exudates and retinal and macular edema in cases with malignant hypertension we can also have disc edema coming to hypertensive choroidopathy wherein we can see choroidal vascular bed abnormalities there view would be acute focal retinal pigment epithelium lesions and retinal pigment epithelium will also have certain degenerative changes as the disease process continues When it comes to hypertensive optic neuropathy there can be subtle early changes but there can be late changes in the form of chronic disc edema Let's have a look at some normal and then abnormal images So here we have a normal fundus image wherein the AV ratio or the arteriovenous ratio is 2 is to 3 and the there is normal arteriovenous crossing so these are called as the av crossover point so whenever we are looking at a patient with uh, hypertension we need to have a good dilated pupil so that we can look at the second order or third order blood vessels also and see these av changes in them here we have the vasoconstriction phase there can be focal or generalized arteriolar narrowing in this image where we have this blue circle we can see that the arterioles are narrowed down in this segment on the other hand in the image on your extreme right hand side you see that there is a generalized attenuation of the arterioles there can be slight segmentation of the blood flow through the blood vessels that are there because of the arteriosclerotic changes that are happening so the segments that have sclerosis will appear a little tighter and the ones that are not will have a broader segment of blood flow therefore it would be a broken segment of blood flow as you can see in this blood vessel over a period of time if the changes are progressive there will be opacification of the vessel wall associated with arteriovenous snicking so at this juncture where we have these white arrows there is arteriovenous snicking and you can see a white opacified blood vessel in this image we have arteriovenous crossover changes wherein the vein tapers under the artery just for pray focus at this point so whenever we are looking at a hypertensive retinopathy patient each point wherever a crossover is happening that should be our area of interest and it's always a good idea to draw a retinal diagram when we are documenting the retinal vascular changes because today we are seeing av crossover changes at this point and tomorrow there can be exudation or there can be exu uh, hemorrhages surrounding this area so drawing a retinal diagram always gives you a clue to future changes Briefly let's have a look at which layers of retina are actually getting involved. So commonly in hypertensive retinopathy we see flame shaped hemorrhages. Now these hemorrhages are flame shaped by virtue of the fact that they are lying in a superficial layer. They are also called as feather shaped hemorrhages. These hemorrhages have indistinct borders. The in blood accumulates at the level of the nerve fiber layer. reflecting the structure of the nerve fiber layer that runs parallel to the retinal surface they last for about 6 to 8 weeks on the other hand dot blot hemorrhages are deeper hemorrhages and therefore they take a long time to clear up whatever is relatively superficial will have a brighter color and dot blot hemorrhages by virtue of the fact that they are a little deeper will have scarlet red or more purplish hue to them their configuration is also due to the intraretinal compression so in the layer of inner nuclear or outer plexiform layer we have dot or blot hemorrhages and in the nerve fiber layer we have these feather shaped flame shaped hemorrhages 
through arteriosclerotic changes, we can have Marcus Gunn sign, which means that there is a compression of the underlying vein at the arteriovenous crossover point. Salu sign, as we can see in the lower image, if you focus at these areas where crossover is happening, suggests that the venules are now getting deflected at these AV crossover points. Bonnet sign suggests banking of the vein distal to the crossing site. So here, the vein, if you see closely, is deflecting quite away from the crossover point. If the changes are continuous, we will see copper wiring and even in advanced cases, we will see silver wiring. So here you see these silver like thread like blood vessels which are so narrowed and totally uh, having art arteriosclerotic changes. These are called as silver wiring. Again, another blood vessel with marked opacification. Actually, the entire blood vessel is involved, but the opacification is much more pronounced after the crossover. So, whenever there is increased vascular permeability, there will be exudation. So, cotton wool spots, which are also called as soft seg exudates, result from that. In patients with exudation, we also have flame-shaped hemorrhages and we can also have hard exudates. This image shows these fuzzy cotton wool spots which are white with feathery margins. Another patient with disc edema, if you see, there is blurring of margin of the disc superiorly and at the area of the fovea, there are hard exudates which are arranged in a macular star-like pattern or circinate pattern.